What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Team Indie by Brightside Games. Team Indie is an indie game about indie games. Yo dog, it's all a bit meta. It's a bit weird. It is a puzzle platformer and it takes a lot of elements from a whole host of a bunch of other puzzle platformers. In fact, you can see the artwork in the background. That's all the characters we're going to be playing with. Uh, many of them are fairly iconic. Some of them might not be quite so iconic, I don't think. I mean, I tend to consider myself a, a bit of an indie gaming aficionado. Uh, there are nine cameo characters in this game to play with. I don't know all of them. There's... The green blob guy there is apparently Jay Jitters from the Great Jitters Pudding Panic. I've never heard of that one! Uh, the black blob on the right hand side is apparently Black Fluffball from Badland. Don't know that either, I'm afraid. However, you've got a few more iconic ones there. You've got stuff like uh, Commander Video, we all know that one from the Bit Trip series. You've got Clunk right in the background there, you know, from Awesome Noughts. Uh, we've also got Tim from Brage sat next to the cat there. The cat is our main protagonist. Let's uh, head on into the game and take a look at the options. The cat is the protagonist and basically the gist of it all is that the cat, for whatever convoluted reason, has been trapped in the computer and this team of video game characters must rescue him by helping him through a series of platforming challenges. Uh, in the options menu, uh, there's not a lot to speak of. We have resolution and windowed mode, and we can change sound effects and music on separate sliders. There's not much more to it than that, but uh, given the style of the game, given the actual nature of it, uh, there's an, I don't think it particularly needs to be much more than that. I mean, sometimes you might say, oh, it might need Dante aliasing. I don't know. I think due to the art style and the way it's been animated, I've not really noticed any issues with that. V-Sync, maybe? No, I've not really noticed any issues there. It's it's all pretty solid. I mean, it's a simple enough game. It's running a rock-solid 60 all the way anyway, so there's not really any issues with V-Sync there. It, it's all worked pretty well for me, so as minimalistic as those options may be, I think that's probably all this game actually needs. So we've got a whole host of different menu, uh, different uh, characters to play with on the different levels throughout the menu. This menu I will say I don't like, because if you want to get through it, you've got to scroll through all the levels in order and it's really tedious. So if you want to decide you want to go back and, oh, I missed something in level 2, there's some collectibles to go back and recollect. If you want something from here, you've got to scroll all the way through. So next to each level you can see which characters you're going to get to play with. So... For example, that's one we get to play with Commander Video, Jitters, and Clunk. If we head to the next one, there's Commander Video and Clunk are going to be the option in this one. And each character's, they're sort of introduced slowly as we go through. I mean, if we go, let's go right back to the start, show you one of the early levels. Something involving, something involving Commander Video. So they've all got their own unique powers, and they're all, they're all rather lifted from things that they will do in the games that they come from. So this is Commander Video. So, Commander Video is now trapped in the game, helping our cat. He can slide under things, he will continually run in the right-hand direction. If I find a power-up, there are power-ups around, he will run in the left-hand direction and they'll, you know, he'll rotate back and forth. So he does that, and he jumps up, and then he'll rotate, and then we head to the next icon. That means we change characters! This is where it gets confusing, because basically it's a little bit Sands of Time, and it's a little bit... Uh, Super Time Force, I guess, because it's kind of a single-player co-op thing with time travel or time manipulation mechanics. So I'm now going to work with Commander Video using another character, and I can press left bumper at any time to undo the last stage of the level. So Commander Video goes off, he, that's the run I've just recorded, so I can follow him along as the cat, I have full control over the cat, I can run back and forth, and Commander Video is just going to lead the way. This is the run I just recorded, and he's going to do his thing. There's a bit of a collectible there. It's one I already had, so it's not really anything terribly exciting. And eventually, we get to the exit. So that's a really simple example of it. Believe me, it gets a lot more complicated, because you've got a lot of characters and you've got a lot of mechanics. And you've got to th think about how they all interact. So let's head on through a few of them and find something a little bit more complex. That one's got like three characters. I don't know which level this is, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Well, what have we got going on in this one? Okay, so we start off with Clunk. Clunk can explode, as is one of his signature moves within Awesome Noughts. That's his thing. He can blow up objects. And obviously by exploding, that depletes his health. He can restore his health, but in this, in this particular instance, that just finishes him off. He's going to essentially expire, and basically the cat's going to take over. So Marvin the cat will take the lead there. Dodge some enemies. We're along here. Commander Video is going to take over for a bit. 
duck under there. That's well, that's the kind of a bit that really messes with your head. So the commander video takes over, slides under that, clunk takes over from commander video, breaks the obstacle, and then once you've finished with all of those guys, it goes back to the cat, and the cat runs alongside those guys. So he does that, clunk explodes. Uh, I could have done that one better. I needed a bit. I need a bit more time to get the cat there. So we undo the last run. We go back to Clunk. Basically, we just need to move faster with Clunk. So I can undo it. Very, like, as I say, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time kind of thing going on there. You can, you can undo that indefinitely. You can undo the entire level if you want. So you can do a lot of trial and error. You can experiment. You can find what works. You can find what doesn't work. You can try new things out and try and get to hidden secrets and try and improve things. So, Jitter's thing is... well, let's rewind that one. Jitter's thing, while well, I've got a moment to talk about it, Jitter's thing is he can, if you use his power, he can create a platform in midair at the cost of some of his mass, I suppose. He becomes slightly smaller, so he has a limited amount of uses of that, which, again, can be recharged with power-ups. And then if the cat follows, he can use the platforms that Jitter creates. They stand, stay around for a limited time. So if I continue this run, bounce up there, create a platform, that might not have been good enough. Let's try that one again. I wanna... There we go. Do that. And then... That was a little bit too much, I think. Let's try that one again. So, let's do that. Grab the cat icon. Then the cat takes over. Bounces off that. No. No. Do it again. Do what I mean? You've got infinite attempts at doing this. So then we get Clunk. Clunk will kill those enemies. Hopefully we can get through before everything explodes. We've got Jitters again. Me, which means I need to basically get across that gap. One, two, oh no. Um, let's, let's get a little bit more distance on that one, I think. Yeah, that should do the job quite nicely. Ah, nuts. I accidentally undid that one. Whoops. We'll grab that. Alright, let's, let's go with that. Oh, undo. I walked off the edge. There's a lot of room for... I mean, I'm not a big fan of puzzle platforming, but when it's... It, it's it's nice to have the liberty just to be able to mess around like that. Some bits can be a bit frustrating, I'll be honest, because you can go back and do them over and over and over and over again and keep failing. But ultimately, it doesn't take that long to rewind, usually, unless you've been messing around for a really long time. And you can just have unlimited goes at trying to do it. And they all these characters interact in really interesting ways. And they're all, surprisingly enough, they're all fairly true to how they interact in the original games. So this will be a level, this next level actually introduces Dust Girl from, uh, what would you call it, a Dust Force, that's the game. Uh, I didn't realise her name was Dust Girl, I don't recall her actually having a name, so that might have been like an internal name or something? I did play Dust Force, I don't recall particularly enjoying it. I, I did do a few videos on it and yeah, sort of disliked it fairly quickly. Um, I, I, didn't, I loved the art style and I loved the music, but the gameplay, um, I'm not so sold on that one. Bit frustrating for my liking. But, again, the gameplay, and maybe given that, it's maybe not the greatest selling point for me, but the gameplay is very, very true to the original. Like all, as I, far as I can make out, most of the characters. So we've got Dust Girl. So she's got the broom, and the broom will let her attack enemies and slide along walls, much as she would in the original Dust Force. Oh, she also has a double jump as well. So I can run along these surfaces. Uh, if you pick up, that was another Dust Girl icon, if you pick up a character icon multiple times, it will act as a checkpoint as well, so you can rewind back to a character's previous checkpoint. The gems, I'm not sure, I mean, there's, gem, there's gems to collect everywhere, and it's just, it's one of those things at the start, it's like, oh, there's gems, you should probably collect them, you collect gems in games, so that's the justification for there being gems. It's a collectible because it's a platform game, and platform games need their collectibles, right? So there we go, we got that. That lets you do it. That just basically clears all the enemies off the screen. I mean, Dust Force, I think it was a little bit more elegant than that, to be quite honest in this. It just kind of clears all the enemies off, off the screen. So I know there was some... No, I don't want to do that, actually. Uh, actually, yeah, there's actually some hidden stuff up there, but I don't think we necessarily need to bother with that, because to rewind from there, I would have to go back through half the level, and that's... I can't be bothered with that for the purposes of demonstration for you guys, to be honest. Uh, I do think there's some interesting stuff going on. So this is the first boss level. I will show you this one. This one is brutal. It makes you play with four different characters all together. And there's not much room for error, so it's it's pretty nasty. So let's let's have a look. So I know we start out with Commander Video. 
Basically, there's just going to be a giant cat about to eat us any moment. There we go. So, story, story, story. Giant cat wants to eat us. Commander Video leads the way. Sets the sets the first half of the bar. Just girl. No. If you die, it just takes you back to the checkpoint. Take the power up. Clear all the enemies out. Carry on running. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Oh, oh that shouldn't have stopped. If you stop on this level, that's just fatal. Need to clear all the enemies. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. It's tricky to get right. This one took me so many attempts. In fact, I got a little bit too far ahead, actually. Maybe I got, maybe, maybe there is such a thing as being too fast. Well, let's ease up then. Cat will attempt to eat me if I don't get to, if I don't keep too much speed up though. Clear them out. Right, Jitter's turn. There's his power ups. Right, let's grab them. Let's not die. Command the video. I might not have made enough leeway with this one because then, and then we get to the cat icon. This is the nasty bit. The cat has to do the entire level in one run without checkpoints. It's goddamn brutal. Actually, I think there's maybe one later on, but you have to do so much of the level without nuts. See? Make one mistake all the way back. You gotta do it all. But the way everything plays together is really nice. I think as, as far as puzzle, ga puzzle platforming goes, there's a lot of elements in here that are really interesting and they all work together really well. And I really like the way they've tied in all the characters from famous games, or semi-famous games at any rate. That did not work as well as I'd hoped and I have to go all the way back. I think all these things tied together really, really, really well. It's surprising. I'm maybe not 100% sold on the art style. The art style's... I don't necessarily think it's bad, I'm just not sure it's quite my cup of tea. It's kind of... That cat's freaky as all hell. The one, both the one that's chasing me and the... I, I did that one wrong. I did that wrong. I was supposed to stand on Jitter's platforms. And to be honest, Marvin the cat um, is a little bit weird as well, to be honest. Got a bit of an ego as well about him when you watch the cutscenes. But there you go. That's... The story, I don't, I don't think you're playing the game for the story. I'm going, I'm going to, can I quit this level now? Because I, I would, I would really like to quit. Can I quit? Is there a way to quit this? Yes, if I press back on the gamepad, that'll do it. Let's go back to level 3. That, that level's just nasty. So that's the first area. This has taken me about an hour and a half, maybe a little longer, to get through all of this area. And that's about, that's four of the characters. There are nine characters total, so... The second area introduces, I guess, the second half of the characters. I don't know how many levels there are total, but uh, I guess we're, we're this, we've just discovered character number five, which is Tim from Braid. Tim from Braid, good lord. we got a character whose primary uh, claim to fame, I suppose, is that he, he he's in a game about time manipulation. So we've got a character from a game about time manipulation in a game about time, uh, time manipulation. Yo dog, I heard you like time manipulation. Jesus, this game. It's got layers. It, it's like an onion or an ogre, I'm not sure which, one of the two. So this is Tim, once we've got a bit of uh, explanatory blurb there. So he can collect a cog, uh, but he can rewind time, but apparently the cog is uh, not affected by time. So there we go. The cog will then let us open the door. And this is this is about the simplest time mechanic they do. It can rewind that. I rewind that back. It's the it's the thing Braid had where some things are affected by your time powers and some of them aren't. Admittedly, in this case, it's not necessarily always obvious. I'm not sure. I think uh, maybe some of the items. Yeah, I think the ones that are glowing are not affected by time. So we can sort of put these platforms out of sync slightly, and by doing so. Can get across here. So the glowing ones on the bottom on on the bottom aren't affected by time powers, and the ones on the top are. And then that's 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 as much as we get out of this level. And then we take the cat. We'll wait for Tim to do his thing. It's kind of strange insofar as the bits where he uses his time power to reverse time. I guess this makes sense, but the bits where he uses his time power to reverse time, uh, you don't get to see those on the replay. Which is really kind of strange, and uh, those have gone out of sync in a very kind of bizarre fashion. Those aren't necessary to complete the level, to be fair, it's just collecting gems. Again, gems are a completionist thing. There's these trophies, they're more completionism. There's 
some of the levels don't have any, so the most of the, I think the most you'll get in a level is three, so they're hidden about the place. And if you if you finish a level without all the gems, you'll get a silver circle around it. So as you can see, I got silver there. Most of them it's not terribly hard to get gold. I mean, most of the levels if you go through, I've got gold on them. Uh, if you don't get all the trophies. There's no actual indication that you haven't gotten a trophy in a level. You can't, at a glance, take a look at a level and see that you haven't got it. So if you don't get it on the first pass and don't memorize where you got it, missed it, and make a note that you need to go back, and then want to go back, you're going to have a lot of trouble finding it again, I think, to be honest. There is this uh, medal room, so if we're going there, trophies, medals, whatever. Uh, we can go and have a look at them, so these are all the ones I've collected. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. And there's a bunch of them missing. I have no idea where to find these! I mean, they're presumably going to be in levels featuring those characters would make a degree of sense, but at the same time, which levels they're in, there's no real indication. So, were I to decide to go all completionist on this game, I would have a, I would have a hard time finding what stuff I've actually missed, which is not so much fun, to be honest. So, if you're completionist, uh, you could find that a little bit frustrating, but then again, if you're a completionist, maybe you're the sort of, sort of person uh, who has maybe a bit of a masochistic side. There's also a few bonus levels kind of around the map. I haven't necessarily done all of them. I had a look at one of them. Uh, let's take a look at that one. It looks interesting. It's got a bunch of characters in it. Let's see how this one plays. So, oh good lord, what have we got here? We've got so, got three paths. Uh, Dust Girl, Commander Video, and Clunk. I suspect it probably doesn't matter too much which order I go in, so let's take Clunk. So if I... Get some health with the power up, explode that guy, get some health with that power up, explode the wall. I guess I can't take any hits from them. No, no, I can't. Okay. Gotta do it all again. Right, explode, explode, explode. That might have been the bad move might have been a bad move. I don't think Oh, I can get up that high. Yes, good. And now what? Okay, we've got a oh there's a switch there. Can I activate that? Opens that door. There's a basically a clunk checkpoint then. Oh my, what have we got here? So, power-ups. Alright, oh, oh, the enemies are on moving platforms. I'm glad there was a checkpoint there. And then I get the power-up above it. Okay. Interesting. I do, I do like the use of all the different characters. They all... It adds a lot of variety to the game, whereas a lot of games sort of have maybe one gimmick and then it's done. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of variety in this game. So there's a switch. There's some gems. Actually, the way Clunk's introduced is really cool because you, if you've played Awesome Noughts, there's kind of a bit at the start of each life, each time your character dies or spawns, uh, that you drop from the sky and collect stuff. They've replaced that with the gems in this. So where you normally collect solo, I guess, is what it is in Awesome Noughts. Uh, right, so if I do that, that's going to... Well, that's going to mess up. Uh, let's try that again. I'm not sure what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm trying to get to that switch, I suppose. Okay. So, okay. That's not going to work. So I need to hit that switch as soon as possible. No, not like that. I need to hit the switch as soon as possible. And, god damn it. Can be a bit tricky at times. And dodge all the spikes that are being shot at me. I suppose this is a bonus level. I guess the bonus levels are probably a little bit tougher than the standard ones. So get that. Get on the platforms whilst they're still there and hit the switch and that makes me the cat again. Woo! Boy, that's one path out of three on this level. So he's gonna go do his thing. Let's use Dust Girl's powers. Okay. This is, to be fair, this is actually done in a slightly different fashion to many of the other levels. Non the other levels wouldn't normally kind of ask you to play like one path at a time like this. It's kind of a bit odd. Ah, nuts. Yeah, so if you spend a lot of time messing about, you end up with a long rewind. I've had longer ones than that, and they're a bit tedious. It would be nice if you could... God damn it. Speed up the rewind somehow. If, 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 the, if you've got a rewind of a, of a play that lasts a few minutes, and that does happen... I could just do that, couldn't I? I've got a wall jump. No. Damn it! You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna do commander video. Let's do that. I can deal with running. At least this one I don't actually have to control the character, so... Well, I, I need to dodge, but that's about it. So, this is just jump at the right moments. I can deal with that. Mostly. I can mostly deal with that. There is a switch up there, but however, I guess the cat can get to that switch, so that's okay. 
There's these hockey things that you can hang on to. I don't entirely recall that being a thing, but I never played a whole lot of the bit trip stuff, so... I don't know. I could be wrong. It's... <laughs> I just remember him running a lot. It's kind of odd that he does this, but there we go. And if he hits a wall, it counts as death, so I probably shouldn't be trying to grab them with him. I should just be... I don't know, how did I get past this one the first time? This is why I shouldn't show... This is why I shouldn't show levels I haven't done when I'm doing puzzle games, because it just ends up like this. I guess I just need to wait for... Yeah, there we go. I know I tend to go back and retrace my steps and show stuff I've already done, because then you don't end up with commentary of me going, How does this work? How does this work? I could just do this all the way through. <laughs> that did not work. Okay. Let us leave this. Leave this nonsense, because I'm getting nowhere with it. But you're kind of getting a feel for the mechanics there, I think. There's a lot of interesting stuff. As I say, there's... There are... At present, I've seen up to four of the characters work together. And five, if you include the cat. The cat really doesn't have any powers, so he's not really a terribly interesting character compared to the others. But uh, there are four interesting characters that work together so far. I would be really interested to see late game if there are any levels that use all nine characters. If there are, that could be really crazy. I'd love to see that how that works. Because this is a really cool idea. This is really, really interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Because I may... The music is... I don't know, it's maybe a bit twee. It's just kind of all... It's very inoffensive stuff in the background. The art style... I'm not totally sold on myself, but I am liking the mechanics, and I'm very much liking the the indie game references. They're, they're, they're very cool. I'd like being able to play Clunk in another game in an entirely different context. That's really cool. That's really awesome. I like this. There is a lot to like about this game. And if you like puzzles, I think you would be well rewarded with this game, I do think. Uh, maybe for me, I can get a bit frustrated at times because I'm not the best puzzle solver in the world, but if you like getting stuck into puzzles, whoo boy, there's plenty in here for you. Definitely. I think I can safely recommend this game. So this will be out on Thursday the 9th of October. This will be out uh, available on Steam for $12.99. Uh, and I would say all your regional equivalent, but it's actually, uh, they've listed it on, on their press kit as being €12.99, which makes me question their currency conversion. That doesn't seem entirely reasonable. That's not how you do a currency conversion, guys, but there you go. So $12.99 or €12.99. I'm not sure what the uh, British price is going to be because they haven't given me a British price, so there you go. Uh, but that will be available this Thursday, and as I say, if you like puzzle games, I think it's something well worth looking at. Anyway, I've been Maroka, this has been Team Indie, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time.